Hey everybody, did it really here? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Charming Empire along Sarah's route. And another reminder before I get into this, Kay's route is being read on Rob's new channel, Bromantic. So if you could please visit his channel to listen to Kay's route, a uh, link will be in the description and in the cards. Because Gentle dropped the route, so Rob's picking it up. But anyway, back to this. So in the last episode, Sarah took us for a walk through town so we could see the rebel's base and we could see the disparity between the poor people and the rich people and all. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. It's nighttime at the palace. When can I use this? I twirl around the parasol Sarah bought me yesterday. Whenever you want to avoid the sun, of course. Take it with you when you go to the garden or something. Sarah rolls his eyes at me. That's not good enough. I can only use the parasol you bought me for a special occasion. Don't use that shabby thing for a special occasion. You need to use something more fit for royalty. Don't call it shabby. I turn my back to Sarah with a pout. When we went shopping yesterday, all the expensive things made me dizzy. Sarah said the price didn't matter, but I didn't want something that would cost an arm and a leg. So we gave up on the clothes and found some parasols at an accessory shop later. I couldn't decide on one pattern or color, so Sarah ended up deciding for me. This is my first present from Sarah. I have to treasure it. I clutch the parasol to my chest, and I hear Sarah's sarcastic voice behind me. I've never seen anyone hug their parasol before. I'm just hugging it because it's from Sarah. But I just give him a dirty look. Sarah's only with me now because he wants to make me the Empress. I'm just using this parasol to escape from reality. Last night, so she told me my wedding's the day after tomorrow. That means there's only one day left. I was still too confused to bring up the throne issue with him last night. Ah, oh, excuses, excuses, girl. But today's my last chance. I need to tell him there are a lot of people suffering under his rule. I have a lot of questions about my wedding, too. There was a loud knock at the door to call me to dinner. You have to talk to your brother today. There's no more time to think about it. Sarah whispers to me before the servant comes into my room. I know. I'll make my decision after the conversation. Sarah nods and we head to the dining hall. <sighs> my hands shake nervously. Meanwhile, Soshi is as calm as ever. Good, he hasn't noticed my hands. I don't think he would care even if he did notice. I follow Soshi's example and calmly work on my meal. I don't want to make him angry before I have to. After dinner, the servants clear out our plates. I open my mouth to talk to him, but he quickly rises from his chair. Wait, Soshi! I call out to him, but he continues to the door. Hey, don't ignore me! If you have something to say, tell Togawa. I'm in a hurry. But this is something I need to discuss with you! I walk over to the door and block Soshi's path. He gives me a powerful angry glare. <sighs> I'm terrified of my brother, but I firmly hold my ground. I said I'm in a hurry. You have no right to interfere with my affairs. I wouldn't dream of it. I just need to talk to you. I meet Soshi's gaze, but he looks away. Tagawa, get this girl out of my way. He barks an order behind him to Kagimitsu. Please, don't interfere, Kagimitsu. Kagimitsu stares at me for a few seconds before turning back to Soshi. My lord, surely you can spare some time to... Tagawa, are you disobeying my orders? Kagimitsu looks between the two of us before reluctantly bowing his head. Forgive me. Kagimitsu? You're supposed to be on our side! I feel betrayed that Kagimitsu won't listen to me, but I don't blame him. Kagimitsu is my brother's most trusted advisor, so Soshi's orders take precedence over mine. Kagimitsu walks over to move me out of the way, but Sarah blocks him before he can touch me. There we go. Sarah? Kagimitsu's face clouds over. What's the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious? Before I can blink, Sarah punches Kagimitsu in the stomach. Well, this uh, saves Kagimitsu from many repercussions. Kagimitsu groans and doubles over. What? I don't want you to interfere. Kagimitsu falls to the floor unconscious. Sarah, wh what have you done? I know he did it so I could talk to Soshi, but I didn't expect things to get violent. Don't worry, he's just unconscious. You didn't have to do that. Forget about me. You have something more important to do. Um, I hesitate before turning back to Soshi. Sorry, Kagemitsu. What are you two planning? Soshi glances at Kagemitsu before turning back to me. First, I want to ask you about my wedding tomorrow. 
You knew it was coming. It's why I called you to the palace in the first place. You have no reason to complain. But it was way too sudden, and it wasn't exactly fair to announce it at the ball without consulting me first. There was nothing to consult you about. So she calmly states the facts. It looks like he's going to defend himself no matter what I say. Your marriage is for the sake of the country. Are you trying to turn your back on your people? That's not... I have a right to stand up for myself. So she has a point, too. If my marriage can save this country, maybe I should just grit my teeth and put up with it. I glance weakly at Sarah, who continues to urge me on with his eyes. I can't rely on Sarah for help. This is my problem. I take a deep breath and look my brother right in the eye. You're absolutely right, and there's nothing I want more than to help my country. However, I don't know if my marriage to a foreign prince is a profitable move. You could have discussed that with me first. Your job is simply to do as you're told. Oh, look, he's got a new pose. Soshi's cool tone feels like a slap in the face. Maybe you're right, but I won't be your pawn. Soshi lets out a big sigh. So what do you want me to do? I can't take back what I said at the ball. There's no use discussing this now. I know that, but I refuse to let myself just get married off. I won't get married unless you tell me who it is to and where I'm going. I speak up again before Soshi can fight back. And one more thing. How did you become the emperor of this country? Pfft. What are you planning to do with that information? Soshi smirks, but he's suddenly not as calm as before. That's right, we got a little something on ya. I heard rumors that you pulled some strings to get the position. I'll believe you if you say they're just rumors, but I need to hear it from your own mouth. How did you become the emperor? I'm not obligated to answer that, and you do not need to know. <sighs> Why won't he answer? He might not be answering because he doesn't need to tell me. But there might also be a reason for him to want to hide the truth. Tell me the truth, Soshi. I said I have no obligation to do so. Soshi shoves me out of the way. Ah! Sarah catches me before I fall. You did great. Sarah's words almost make me cry. In the end, I didn't accomplish anything. Uh, yeah, you did. I failed. I can't let your hard work go to waste. Huh? Sarah sets me upright and follows my brother out the door. Here we go, the beginning of the coup. Where is he going? Sarah runs out so fast that I'm left behind in a daze, but I quickly come to my senses. There's no time for this. I'm worried. I run out into the hallway and find Sarah pointing a sword at Soshi. Mm. Ah! Sarah? First he punches Kagemitsu, and now he has a sword drawn. Not to mention his opponent is my brother, the most powerful person in this country. Man, and he looks pretty sexy doing it, too. No one in their right mind would pick a fight with the Emperor. I need to stop him. He's only doing this for me. And the whole country, really? Um, oh, apparently my choice doesn't matter, so... I think I'm going to not stop him. Sarah's just trying to get Soshi to answer my questions, so there's no reason for me to stop him. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have guessed that he's... Uh, trying to take him prisoner or something, or try to force him into something. I actually want to stop him, but I hold myself back. I hope no one sees us. Even if no one sees us here, Sarah will be punished if Soshi tells the guards. But all I can do is pray. Sarah closes in on my brother and pushes the blade harder against Soshi's neck. I'm sorry, but I have no choice. It's time for you to pay the piper. You can't beat me with the sword. Do you plan to kill me if I don't speak? Sarah doesn't loosen his grip on his sword. That's not a bad idea. It's the fastest way to get your sister on the throne. Sarah! I thought he wanted to be more secretive about his plan. I can't cover up what Sarah said, but now I'm more worried about what's going to happen to Sarah than what Soshi's going to say. I know I shouldn't be thinking like that, but I can't help it. I want to stay with Sarah forever. While I waver between putting a stop to this or not, Sarah speaks. You might not be the only one, but don't try to tell me you're not an accomplice in this government conspiracy. Sarah's harsh words don't make it sound like he's talking to the Emperor at all. But something Sarah says stands out to me. Accomplice? That sounds like Soshi's not the only one controlling the government. But that can't be right. If Soshi's the Emperor, he should have full control. No, that's not usually how governments work. It's not really usually just one person. They usually have advisors and key people that they work with. How do you know that? Soshi doesn't deny it. I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't know what's going on. 
Tell us how you became the emperor and who's really running the government. I hold my breath as I wait for Soshi's answer. <laughs> when Soshi falls silent, Sarah moves his blade closer. I almost scream, but I decide to trust Sarah. Very well. I'll tell you all I know, but not here. Sarah glances at me, and I give him a tacit nod. Okay, you have a deal. Sarah keeps his sword on Soshi's neck. Do you mind putting your sword down? Soshi points at Sarah's blade. I don't want you running away. The sword stays out until you finish talking. <sighs> I'm not fast enough to run away from you anyhow. Soshi gives Sarah a wry smile, but it almost looks like the same Soshi I knew growing up. Hmm. We go back to the dining hall and Soshi and I sit at our usual places at the table. Sarah is in his usual spot behind me. So, you want to know how I came to power? Soshi starts off before he's even asked. Yeah, that's right. The minister assassinated the previous emperor, your father. <sighs> I was afraid Soshi might have had a hand in the assassination, so it's a relief to hear he didn't. But it's still hard to deal with the fact that my parents were killed. Don't tell me you didn't know. I had a hunch, but I never knew for sure. It's difficult to hear the truth. But what's done is done, and your sadness won't bring them back. I know. My voice comes out as a whisper as I stare at my lap. Is he trying to cheer me up? Maybe Soshi hasn't changed as much as I thought he did. He might even have a good reason for the government situation. His eyes seem a little gentler than usual as I gaze straight back into them. And it looks like there's an episode 15, so I guess that's not the ending. I guess we actually get another chapter. Hooray! Extra episodes are good! <laughs> So I hope to see you in the next episode to find out a little bit more about how Soshi got to be on the throne and how we got sent away into the country and who this conspirator is. Because you know how the ending's actually going to be. It's Sarah's route, so we got to end up with him, right? So, hope to see you in that next video so we can find out some more stuff. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.